Hey, I believe this is truly a historic day for the state of Georgia. In 2012, Georgia passed comprehensive criminal justice legislation to slow the growth of its prison system while holding offenders accountable and keeping communities safe. This is something, in my opinion, that changes uh, the direction of Georgia for, for a generation. Over the last five years, more than a dozen states have passed broad sentencing and corrections reforms that are projected to save several billion dollars over the next decade. Taken together, the reforms represent a dramatic shift in state criminal justice policy. This is a paradigm shift. I mean, this is a real cultural change for how we do business with regard to criminal justice in Kentucky. This is an issue that really uh, transcended uh, party politics. Before these reforms, prison costs were soaring, yet recidivism rates remained high. It would have been insane for us to continue the system that we had because it wasn't working, it wasn't protecting the public, it was costing a tremendous amount of dollars, it should be used for more productive purposes. It was clear we were simply not getting a return on investment. Now, thanks to policies that focus prison space on serious offenders and strengthen probation and parole, states are starting to achieve better results. Texas led the charge in 2007 when leaders decided to stop building new prisons and invest in alternative programs instead. Since then, the state has averted nearly $2 billion in prison cost, parole revocation rates have declined 36 percent, and the crime rate has dropped to its lowest in more than 40 years. We have stabilized the prison population. We have made it safer because the numbers clearly show that. The success in Texas has inspired other states to look at their own numbers and put corrections dollars into programs that do a better job of protecting the public. Instead of building new beds or more beds, we're going to reinvest a portion of our money into community-based treatment services, which in the long run will not only save us money, but produce a much safer state and reduce our, our crime rate in the process. It's the crime rate has continued to drop and the public realizes that they are in fact safer than they were and that what we've done has been smart utilization of their taxpayer dollars. Sentencing and corrections reforms, especially reforms of the magnitude that we're seeing around the country, are not happening because this is easy. They're happening because we now know so much better than we did 30 years ago when we started down the prison building path what works to stop the cycle of recidivism. Through a process called justice reinvestment, leaders across the three branches of government are examining the specific drivers of the prison populations and cost in their states. Based on the findings, these bipartisan working groups are crafting policies that meet their unique challenges. This data-driven process really uh, allowed us to make smart decisions, uh, not based on assumptions, not based on beliefs, but based on what really was going on in our criminal justice system. In a political environment that, that tends to be very divided and, and almost hostile at times, we were able to draw people together that had uh, differing points of view and different political philosophies by focusing on the facts. What we're really talking about is things that both parties are interested in because it is not soft on crime. We are being strategically tough on the right people. Focusing on the data has produced common ground on an issue that used to be one of the most divisive in American politics. When it came time to draft the bill, I think we had uh, really an agreement, a consensus with all legislators. We passed 38 to zero. This bill passed the House and the Senate without a no vote. The data and the research are gonna continue to improve. And if we see the kind of leadership over the next few years that we've seen over the past few years, then we're gonna continue to do a better job protecting public safety, holding offenders accountable, and controlling the cost of corrections. Leadership's about being out front, uh, and, and this movement is about being out front because uh, those that are not are going to be left behind. Don't do it because it sounds good or feels good. Do it because there's proof that it works and that it will have a positive impact for you.